Cool is an ally, is an employee. Uh, I'm in South Africa right now as I respond to these questions. And um, I'm with you showing Somia Mangonyama, Ada Daklonas. So Myama um, is all about the black beauty and also pride of being a black person, of being African, uh, of being, um, I could say, my pride of speaking my mother tongue, my language, which is Zulu. So it has a lot to do with the language. It has a lot to do with um, my multiple identities that I possess as a human being, but most of all, um, it's more about like race and pride of being the person that I am, expressing myself uh, visually, uh, trying to make those people out there who might not have an understanding of uh, black creatives, black archive, black uh, aesthetic, and also presence. Maybe other people might have seen a lot of images of us in different uh, spaces, uh, which are not um, uh, uh, documented by us or penned by us, or not our visualization. So with Somia Mamunyama, I wanted to take pride of uh, the person that I am, using Ogonyama, which is uh, my mother's clan name. And we, when we, we take photographs we tend to forget about where we come from and why we exist and express all ourselves in a way that we know how to uh, so i think it's important for one to get a sense of like visual background and bring forth all the elements that are attached to our beings and and put them in the form so somiyama it's like beautiful dark darkness because for most people when they think of like someone that is dark or when they think of the way dark or black it's always uh, projected as negative so I wanted to make sure that I bring forth a positive imagery that speaks to me that is about me uh, that touches on personal experiences uh, that we do not uh, use to um, project as photographers. So this is me in front of you with my complexities that are in place projected in almost every image that you you are looking at. Uh, the process comes in different ways and different forms, different meanings to everyone, you know. For me it's about like travel, personal experience, presence, personal projection, and also expression in a different way using all that is at my disposal, that is accessible, in which I respond to what has just happened or what connects to like historical moments that we do not tend to um, deal with uh, with like immediate effect. So the process is simple, is to take self-portraits using a remote control or cable uh, um, a button, depends on what people use, but I use remote uh, to take those images. So it takes like seconds, maybe an hour or so, with a camera on tripod, if that's connect and and just roll like self-timed shoot done transfer all the works that have been produced or that's been produced and then you deal with post-production it is during this post-production in which you get the best aesthetic that you want to get as a final product which then speaks to the sonyama you know all the anticipation that comes with like photo taking or photo making that becomes a whole because at first it's just like the moments and don't know what's next or how what this whole thing is going to become but then with all that process it means like preparing and thinking through you know the whole mission you know that you have in which you visualize all that is at your 
disposal or that is within the surroundings to just get that one image. So what then becomes of Sumyama is that post post production that becomes like magical. So it is the post production requires to contrast that brings forth the best of each and every visual document that you see <coughs> as Sumyama. That is one thing, and it could be so distant to your feelings. But then I use photography as therapy. So I have so many issues, I have so many personal issues, and which bring forth those emotions that are attached to each and every photo that I have taken. So it doesn't come from a, a a, 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 a funny or joyful place it always attached or connect with pain you know most of them so those responses that I have had that led to each and every picture speaks to some painful experience or some experience that triggered with those emotions which then led to the particular image and as you see that most of the images are not smiling because there's nothing to laugh at especially when most people are experiencing uh, racism and when most people are experiencing xenophobia when most people are experiencing uh, queerphobia transphobia and all the phobias and the isms that are negative that have um, a, a different impact in their lives or that displaces them or that leaves them ridiculed or that makes them feel unwelcomed, you know. So oh, each and every picture has a, a prop or a material of concern that has its own history, that has its own narrative, that if given a moment to speak out each and every piece that I've used to say something about itself. I will say, for instance, the image, uh, the image is taken at the height of, of uh, COVID. Um, we stuck indoors. Nobody doesn't know what to think. A lot of people are losing their lives, the left, right, and center. And then we told, you know, to take precautions because. Uh, you don't want to put uh, other people at risk and you also want to protect yourself. So I guess at this period, most creatives, you know, they came up with a, a, a visual or they came up with the documents that spoke to the moment, you know, in response to COVID, you know, or in response to the pandemic that has hit the world, you know, by storm. So, and I, I, I used a mask in front of a mirror, like mirroring myself, reflecting uh, all the going on in, 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 in our lives or in our household. So that picture and picturing others and relating my own fear, you know, in front of a camera was one of my, of the ways in which I thought like, okay, these are, uh, uh, the moment, but also it could be a win or lose kind of situation. Either I take precautions, either I just ignore that what's real going on right now is really happening, or just move on. So the only way in which one wanted to memorize was through this image, which then goes beyond just it being a visual diary or being you know, that moment being diarized, but then it becomes that document that is archived, archivable, that um, leave as a memory that will live beyond us, where the future generations, when they look at that particular document, they always know that there was year 2020, year 2021, and if born at that period, the mask will become that person's first name you know, and COVID that becomes the second name of that person. As painful as it may seem to, especially the generations that have lost their grandmothers, that have lost their family members, that have lost those that were connected or related to them, that document 
obviously won't come down as a positive image but it would always work as an experience as a moment that forces one to pause and think of how we survived or how some of the family members survived yeah so some images they go beyond just them being uh, that visual entry or that diary entry but then they force us to think beyond or the or they let us breathe and enjoy life in different ways depends on how we read them or how we want to reference them yeah so photography is more than just a visual entry in a diary or it's more than just like a diary you know um reading or text you know it, it's just beyond that and how i work on that that memory to me is processed with all my six senses it's visual and then it forces one or me or those who are attached or moved by it to think on what they're looking at and how that object or piece of material connect to them even if we are not in the same continent or we are not in the same country or we not speak like the same language or not of the same race times when thinking that the before and after the before is pure what's the wait the before it's more about like the about to moments that one it, it's more like a journey to be undertaken if i could simplify it that before you know when i'm like thinking i have to take photographs what do i want to say but i think that i've used almost every piece of something how can i use this without repeating the previous shot taken and already out there in the world shared and also probably hung in people's walls especially for those who collect a uh, a uh, uh, photographs it 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 becomes like harder that journey like it's like many kilometers to travel without reaching there because it's not yet processed or not yet done and then the after it's exciting because i could play with that image but like getting started you know that ignition is is always like key or major because then i want to do it but how is it going to look like and when the image is taken i'm no no longer myself and i don't look like this and most of the images are like highly feminized which is not my cup of tea or 24/7 kind of living um um i'm kind of like in between like androgynous kind of for most of my work it's like femme but that's not my language and then for some way i'm like kind of like masculine uh with not much dress it then reads as different and also it speaks to ancestry or connection with the male in my family and then with the feminine it's in response to the history of women or histories of women and history of like female bodied beings in space and how they treated and how they objectified then it becomes like so many things and when you look where i'm wearing like head scarf then that's a different person that connects to my mother uh, who's late and then you have other ones in which i respond up i am responding on like a, a female gendered body in space that's been treated or a person who has gone through an experience that almost connect to my one you know so all of these how do you then 
create images that speaks to them, that speaks to you, that speaks to so many people in which you kind of like emphasize the need of self-love, uh, which is not easy, but so complicated on its own, just like that thought of like, what does it mean to self-love, to self-care, to reconnect with the inner being or self. So it become like that complex, complicated document when looking at these visuals and you think to yourself, oh wow, that's the thing. So people tend to read mostly the objects that are used in these photographs and the materials that are used in these photographs because they're accessible to them or they are they know of them because they use them at their disposal, you know. So it's like differs. Yeah. But in all, I just want to preach like the importance of self-representation to speak your truth if you can and also to make a statement when or where there is a need to promote um, a, a, a scripting or rewriting of black black histories using selves you know as own subject uh, to say that this whole thing and these issues and these personal experiences they start with us and it's very important that we share them without fear or fail because if we do not you know uh, change these visual histories nobody will do do them uh, or, 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 or write that visual narrative for us or on our behalf because your personal experience is your personal experience and if you feel that you are not like fully represented or not represented at all, you have to take action and try, you know, to be responsible and do your bit. And then the next person will uh, continue from where uh, you have started or where others have started. Speaking as a black person in South Africa, where I don't see many of us in 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 the media or mainstream media what do i do do i complain um i'm struggling with like this self-loving so the bit that i could do is to photograph myself it's a little bit it's not like much that i'm doing to say okay by the way if i cannot indulge on certain things just share a, a picture at least that would make another person wish to uh, take their own picture and then it means that a million south africans or million africans taking pictures painting their own pictures will then leave this world with like massive documents that will be read million years to come which then be, will become like rare books that lives over generations and when these planets you know change you know into something that we don't know because we might not be there then then the next generations will look at us as these foreign bodies that once lived in which they they, they read about a thing or two like how we 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 taught you know at schools or universities about like African tribes and the, 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 the regalia that they wore, the attires or the traditional dress that they, they wore then and the hairstyles that they had back then, we just cannot make sense how they use little or natural products or apps to make this look so beautiful. And we get excited and we want to use that as a reference to what we do presently. And what we call it these days, we say it's fashion or high fashion. And we're talking about trash that has become something, but it once existed before. The colors that we paint in our, in our photographs, you know, how we stand next to something because we want to look good. It existed before, but maybe a person wasn't standing next to the mirror or next to the rock. And what was next to the rock is now a table. What was the mirror? Maybe was a reflection in water 
and it was still a beautiful image. And how it was produced or realized, it was not the camera as such, but it was a different form of a plate that was turned into something so, so, so important or remarkable, which leads to the aesthetic that we speak about these days. So these images are just for processing, for people to learn from them, and also for people um, to care and to rethink of what visuality is all about, what like black personhood is all about, how to change the narrative and and rethink or learn or respect people's um, differences, people's races, and people's aesthetic, and people's presence. And when people do not understand something, it allows them to ask questions in order for them uh, to get proper responses, to learn from those, you know. So Somya Mangunyama is just an educational piece of visual document that I guess speaks to the masses. And if people don't get it, I guess they'll be affected by those visuals in a different way. And they will have something to take home with. You know, because one could ask, why are we so infested by so many black images? It's because they're not used to seeing many in their countries or respective countries. Or maybe there are many black people who exist, exist in those spaces, but they never get an opportunity to photograph themselves, to process their presence in those spaces, to project themselves in a light manner which won't make them to be dissed or displaced, you know? So it leads to dismantle all the systems in place that develops or disadvantages or undermines a black body or a black person or or expertise rather of a black person and in my headspace I could say that there are so many pictures in the world but most of the most beautiful black people's images were not taken by them they were seen by others they were captured by others they were projected by others in their own in those uh, third parties way it's never about like the first person. So now in this instance, I just wanted to use the eye, as in ethnographically, I, as in me, giving myself, like presenting, projecting, dispatching myself to the world, you know, uh, in, in this manner, you know. So people get to Rethink, respect, and also reconnect with these bodies that they never did before. Yeah, yeah. So there's so much into it. It's like overloaded, and it's one of the that document in which, like, you use your sight, you want to touch, you want to say something. So there are so many dialogues that are been created with this uh, with this document that you are seeing in front of you but it is a personal archive um, it's a visual creation that is not like common which is getting common these days because there are so many people who are either painting themselves black <laughs> or what blackness or or share it in, in like in a certain in a certain way In this exhibition, the different mediums that are included, um, the photographs and also the speed, some speedworks and also paintings. And I guess that if you try to express yourself, you try with your whole being, with your whole self, with 
all there is there to be just to make a statement and uh, desperate to be heard um, you need people to get a grip and to listen to what you have to say and then I thought that photographs were not enough and needed to come with like paintings which is uh, my new sensation and I'm loving it because it takes longer than maybe for the vibes that we take and it's exciting it's 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 a a healing method on its own you know just uh, the, the whole process of of painting so and also it's still the same self portraiture is the key with and uh, with beating beating it has to do with like the beat of my heart you know like heart beat and which takes also longer than before and i love beats they form part of who we are as as, as, an Af as, as africans and it's been done for ages you know it dates back to more than uh, centuries um, now we have a new way in which we uh, we beat and why we do it and and uh, why it's important now nah, it forms part of like traditional um, uh, creations you know that's been forgotten or remembered by those who love it but other people really uh, don't do it I, I like it so much and it's also a personal matter which goes back to all the aesthetics that attaches the soul to the meaning and being you know has a lot to do with like inner feelings as well you know yeah so I brought them I needed people to know that a person is more than just one thing you know you are many things you know, and he you confirm that you are that one because it's just like one body but then how you think and how you see yourself and how you think and how you connect with the universe it comes in so many forms it's not just like one spirit there's a whole lot that is attached to it so hence i thought that i'm still saying the same thing and i keep on saying it respect black, black excellence black you know expert or expertise in what we're capable of doing cannot only be defined by those who have certain positions who decide what should be in and what's not you know so i've learned along my my travels that there's so much into that so limitations they never help one to reach anywhere but if you tackle things you know if you generalize the better because maybe somebody might be looking for something that is not present until it's presented then it creates a different form of the balance in a way yeah. so this will be seen because we produce it and then there'll be a lot of paintings i have my target number for 2021 uh, which is like 100 paintings <laughs> it's a few updates but um, my flow is less on photography these days because I'm excited uh, by paintings. What does it mean really? It's about capabilities and abilities that we, we possess. What do they mean really? Uh, these bits are more about like unity and humanity, you know, at once. And also speaking on like um uh, distributions in terms of like the work and how this work connects so many people how it gets to the art world it depends it speaks on the need of connecting all the creatives and also speaking and learning from each other and without judging people or without any judgments <laughs>